Welcome to F That. This is episode four. And today we are talking about how being rich isn't a bad thing. In this episode, we're going to trash the belief that rich people are evil or somehow inherently more entitled to money than you. And we're going to talk about the only reason why you don't have more money right now. So let's get into it. So really quickly, I want you to ask yourself, have you ever stopped and wondered why so many of us believe that having money is somehow bad or that rich people are somehow corrupt just because they have a lot of money? I don't know about you, but for me, my mom made it seem like when I, if I became rich, that I was going to somehow turn into this evil dictator who is out for blood, that somehow me having money was going to change my entire personality. And it was just going to make me this ruthless person who wanted everybody dead. That can't just be me. (laughs) Like it felt so deep for us. And for so many people, this mindset that rich people are bad was handed down from generation to generation, from our grandparents to our grandparents, and then on to us. And so I want to break down some of these misconceptions and explore the positives of having money. And that's going to help you shift your mindset towards having financial abundance. So first, I want to talk about the idea that having money is reserved for like the select few people who gained their money and gained their wealth through like unethical means. Okay. And it's like, I think deep down, you know, that most people have worked hard for their money. But I also want you to understand that you don't have to work hard for money. Money is neutral, right? So money doesn't care where it goes. But money should be easy to bring into your awareness. Once you believe that it is hard to earn, then that becomes your reality. And so if you always felt like money was hard to earn, that's because that's how it is for you. The people who have a lot of money might have felt like it was easy for it to come by for them, which is why they continue to attract more. You having a negative relationship with money is the reason why you continue to self-sabotage, which is what prevents you from having more wealth. Let me explain that a little bit. Because you subconsciously believe that having a lot of money is either makes you evil or it's hard for you to come by. That is why you subconsciously push it away because you don't want to become evil. You don't want to become this mean old nasty person that your parents told you you were going to be if you had money. So you push it away. And one of the ways that you push it away is by believing that it's hard to come by. So then you're like, well, if I have to work harder to make it, I'm not going to want to do that. So you don't work harder or you push so hard that you believe that because your hard work is entitling you to money, whereas money should just be at your doorstep. Money should just show up for you. The amount that you have to work, quote unquote, for money has nothing to do with how much you bring into your awareness. And that is where so many people get it wrong. That's also why people who have more money might still feel like they don't have enough because it's all about your relationship. It's not necessarily the dollar amount. It's also why people who win the lottery tend to blow all of their fortunes because they're not a vibrational match to sustain the amount of money it is that they have created for themselves. But it is always about the vibration. It is never about the exact dollar amount that you have in your account. How you act every time you go up in income changes. So you might be saying, hey, I want to be a vibrational match to make $1,000 this month, but you're acting like someone who is a vibrational match for $1. I remember for me, I was saying, oh, I want to be a match for 10K months. And then I actually like looked at my finances and I was like, between me and my husband's income, we were already making that which is why I felt like I couldn't make any headway in my business because I was already a match for what it was I was asking for, which is why I was stuck. So understanding your money and how it's coming in and going is another reason why you might not feel like you're bringing more into you because you might actually bringing more into you than you think you are, or you might not You might not be shooting high enough. The universe is constantly conspiring in your favor and wants more for you than you want for yourself. And so sometimes you have to look up and be like, oh shit, I'm actually having more that's coming within my awareness right now than I thought I was. 
I want to talk too about how we villainize people like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, right? Because it's like, oh, they have all this money. Why aren't they using it for good? And it's like, first of all, it's their fucking money, <laughs> right? They don't have to do anything with it that they don't want to do. But the idea that they somehow took advantage of people, that they somehow rolled over and showed their tummy and, you know, gave people up and that they're somehow part of a mafia or anything like that. Well, I mean, I'm sure if, with everything going on with like Diddy right now, I'm sure that somewhere, somehow that could be true. But to make that assumption that people who are rich automatically did dirty things to get their money is another reason why you don't have any because you think that you are going to have to transform into this evil fucking person to be money. And instead, you should be telling yourself that money will always amplify who you have always been. I am so generous. I am so kind. Having more money makes me even more generous. That's it. The I think a lot of what we see growing up on TV is who's like, oh, money changed you, this, that, and the third. And it was like, no, money made me a bigger version of the person that I've always been. You just couldn't see it when I was broke and poor. And so it's like, do you really know yourself? Do you, do you know yourself enough to know that having a lot of money would only amplify the amazing things about you? And if you don't know yourself enough to know that, that's another reason why you push it away. But let's talk really quickly about one of the reasons why most of us have a terrible relationship with money. And that's because of who our parents are and who our grandparents are. Most of us are millennials or Gen Xers, right? And we have, we were raised by baby boomers. Baby boomers, their parents were the people who lived through the Great Depression. I think they're known as the silent generation, right? And this was like the 20s and 30s. These were people who literally had no money. And these were people that, the people that actually had money were actually being a little bit stingy with it. And they weren't being the nicest with their money because there was no money to be had. And so a generation of people who literally had no money raising another generation of people to believe that money still wasn't available to them, who then trickled that onto us. And that scarcity and those survival instincts of I have to hoard everything that I have so that nobody can come and take it from me because it's mine and nobody can take it. That's the reason why we get so stingy with our money. Let me ask you this, because I see this a lot. It's like people who have a lot of money are more free with it. People who have almost no money are very stingy with it. And it's like, oh, I don't want people to take what I have. And it's like, but you don't have anything to take. <laughs> you ain't got no money for me to have. People who have more money are more willing to give it up freely because they know that more will return to them. Whereas people who are super fucking stingy with their cash hold on to it. Like, honey, you have a dollar. I can't take anything from you. Right? So it's like, we were raised to believe that money was hard to come by because our grandparents suffered through this time where there was actually no money. And then the people that had the money were evil for having it and not sharing it with everyone. And that's why we have the attitudes that we have today. So let's talk about a relationship with money. I have a client right now. We'll just call her client L. And she actually makes more money than I do. She and her husband have a ton of businesses and jobs and things like that. They work a ton of jobs together. And they have, for all intents and purposes, a good life. But they find themselves in a debt cycle where they get themselves out of debt and then they find themselves right back in debt. And that's because... My client has a poor relationship with money because she based it so heavily on her parents. When I did an intention setting session with her, I asked her, like, what are your goals? And all of her goals were based on who she didn't want to be. And it was like, I don't want to be bad with money like my parents were. But because she had no real understanding of who she wanted to be, that's why all of her goals were just based on I don't want to end up like my parents. And it was like, but that's not actually goals. And you're not actually getting anything done in life because all you're thinking about is who you don't want to be. And because you have no direction on where you're trying to go, you only know what you're running from. That's how you end up running in a circle. And so her relationship with money, anytime she spent it on herself, she felt bad, she felt negative, and she just had a negative relationship with money. So see how it's not necessarily the amount of money she had, but her awareness and her feelings towards it. 
And so how we worked on this with her was we are working using breath work and subconscious reprogramming to reprogram her body to feel safe with all amounts of money and understand that her parents' money story isn't her own. Her dad's relationship with money is not her own. Just because that's your dad doesn't mean everything that you do has to be like him. And so we do a lot of that subconscious practice inside of my work to help you rewire your relationship with money. Because again, right now you're thinking that your money story has to be like your parents, that money is evil, and that you're subconsciously pushing it away for reasons that you really cannot understand. And we do all of that healing at a subconscious level. I want to talk to you too about this myth that you have to sacrifice something in order to have a lot of money. A lot of people believe that being wealthy comes at the cost of healthy relationships, like celebrity marriages, like, oh, they have so much money. Why wouldn't they last? Or like when people go from being not famous to famous and all of a sudden their marriages fall apart, people blame the money. People, <laughs> people always blame the money. They never blame like the, the paparazzi in the press for somehow now making people who were private before, now their business is out everywhere. They don't blame the pressure of what it is to be a celebrity. They blame the money. What's money got fucking do with it? Money should make things easier. Money makes everything easier. <laughs> money doesn't, again, money is neutral. It doesn't care where it goes. It only amplifies a relationship or a personality within that relationship even more. Okay? And so I'll give you an example for my life. My father is a narcissist. And I don't know what part of his childhood triggered that in him because I don't know him well enough to know. But I do know that money was a huge factor in how he railroaded all of his baby mamas. And he was so caught up in his own dreams and the things that he wanted to do for himself that he destroyed every relationship that he had. But he kept his baby mamas close and they kept buying into the shit bag that he was selling because he was whispering sweet nothings in their ear and then they were giving him money. And so my mom, not only did she have a silent generation parent as a boomer, so her relationship with money was already skewed, but then she's had multiple people abuse her trust through money. And so she believes that if you were all about money, then you were going to somehow try and screw people over because of the way that my dad did her. And that's just not true. And so she made me feel bad for wanting to have a lot of money because I think she inherently thought that I would turn into my father. I don't know if it's because of DNA or some other fucking reason, but she just thought that I was going to be a bad person because I was going to have money and that I was going to somehow change. Unfortunately for her, I had to cut her off before I even had a lot of money because of how poorly she was treating me and how badly she was making me feel about the things that I wanted. And I was like, I've always known that I wanted to make a lot of money. She would make me feel bad for chasing a degree that would make me a lot of money. She made me feel bad if I wasn't spending my money on her. She always felt really entitled to my money. And I was like, I don't deserve to feel this way. Fuck all that. That's fucking stupid. But I like having money. Because when my husband was deployed, I was paying a housekeeper to come over. And I really need to set that back up because I loved having a housekeeper. I was sending my laundry out every week for me and the kids, and it was coming back to me washed, dried, and folded. All I had to do was put it away. And it was giving me more time back in my day to enjoy my kids and to enjoy my fucking free time. Because literally, y'all got, got kids? Three kids takes a whole day worth of wash, drying, and putting away laundry. I didn't want to do that. Having money opened me up to, I decided to start a podcast. I could have did it by myself, but that would have been a lot of extra work. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So now I have a podcast manager because having money gives me that. Having money allows me to buy an $800,000 house with a pool in the backyard for my kids to play in. Why would I feel bad about that? And the more money I have, the more I'm willing to give to friends and family and people that I love and I care about. Because I was tired of feeling like I was a bad person for wanting a lot of money. Because I'm not. I tell my friends all the time, I'm like... They were like, I was like, we're planning a trip in 2026 and we're going to go to Disney World again and we're going to go to Bali. And they're like, how are we supposed to do all this? I'm like, I, let me get my money up. <laughs> let me get my money up 
and I'll pay for us all to go. Because those are the types of things that I want to do with my money. There's no evil involved, but you've got to stop believing the lies that your parents have told you and that the media, oh my God, it's not like one of those white guys on their fucking podcast. Like, stop believing what movies tell you. This shit's not true. You get to decide what's true for you. You're in full control here, babe. I want to talk about why you subconsciously feel unworthy of having the money it is that you have. Because again, the only reason that you don't have more money right now is because you don't feel worthy of having it. That's it. That's the only reason why you don't have more money is because you don't feel worthy of having it. It's not your job. It's not your business. It's not the people you're surrounded by. It's you don't feel worthy of having it, which could be a direct influence of your job or the people that you're surrounded by. And you need to fix that. What are you surrounded by that's making you feel unworthy of having riches? What are you surrounded by that's making you feel unworthy of having more? And how are you, are you ready to fix that? Are you ready to embrace your worthiness level of having seven figures? Because babe, there, do you know how much money there is in the world? I Googled this a couple of weeks ago and it was like, there's a couple trillion dollars out there. And in your mind, you're like, that's not a lot. And it's like, do you have any idea how long it would take one person to spend that money? I think Jeff Bezos is worth a couple billion dollars. He's worth like $10 billion or something. They said he would have to spend a million dollars a day for like 120 years in order to go through his fortune. That's a lot of fucking money. And that's just a couple billion. That's not even trillions, which is what is available in the world. And you're letting a couple people have that. And you're out here with your, oh, I can't afford $47, bitch ass mind frame. That's why you don't have more money because you have no concept of how much is available out there and how much of it you can have. And you don't have to step on other people to have it. You don't have to take away from other people in order to have it. Money circulates. You're out here thinking that once you spend a dollar, it's gone forever. How about when you spend a dollar, five more come back to you? But this mindset is all tied up in your worthiness of it. And it's like, why do you not believe that you are worthy of having a billion dollars? Because you're like, oh, well, and again, that's the other reason why lottery winners, they squander their savings and they squander the money that they win because they don't believe that they're worthy of maintaining it. Because they have a terrible relationship with money. So you're like, oh, I would take $1,000 right now. But the universe is like, bitch, how about a million? You're worthy of that. But you have to feel that within yourself. In a previous episode, we talked about how you have to move first. And the universe wants to shower you with riches. But you have to show the universe that you are worthy and that you're vibrating on that frequency in order to accept it. Abundance is an abundance of everything. Money is just one of those pieces of abundance. And having a lot of money opens you up to so much more abundance that's available to you. But if you keep looking at having a lot of money in a negative way, or you keep viewing it as somehow reserved for other people, and you keep looking at it like, oh, well, only certain people can have that or must be nice for them to have that, you're going to push it away. And that's why you're never going to have it. You have got to change your mindset around how you view money. One of the easiest ways to do that too is by simply thanking money every time it comes into your awareness. And I'm not just talking about finding a dollar on the floor. I'm talking about, oh, I got a refund on this that I wasn't expecting. Thank you, money, for being there for me. Oh, my electric bill was a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. Thank you, money, for being there for me. Oh, I got this random check in the mail from this class action lawsuit that I never wanted to be a part of. That's $7.05. Thank you, money, for being there for me. When you start showing gratitude for money, that's when it starts to show up. And I love to use this analogy of if you had a boyfriend or if you had a spouse or you had a partner and they were always showering you with gifts, they were always buying you flowers, they were always doing nice things for you. And if what if you were constantly saying to them, you never show up for me when I need you, you're never there when I need you, that person would probably end up breaking up with you because they'd be like, what am I going to come here for? She don't even like me. That's how you're treating money. That's what your relationship with money is like. 
And if you don't start treating money with respect and start putting some respect on money's name, that's why it's not going to show up for you. Because it's just another energy. And if you're not on the vibration to attract that level of energy to you, that's why you're not going to see it. It's not because money, having money is bad. It's not because money itself is evil. It's because you don't appreciate it when it shows up for you so that it can show up for you even more. So I want to help you shift your beliefs around money. So we're going to do a couple of things here. First, I want you to recognize how you feel about money. What negative beliefs do you have about it? And it's okay for you to pause here and reflect on these in addition to the prompt questions that will be at the end. How do you feel about it? What's your current relationship with money? Would you say it's positive or it's negative? And then each one of those beliefs that you write down, I want you to think about where you got that idea from. Where did you get that belief from? How did it show up for you? Who taught you that? And is that something that you actually want to believe? Or is it something that you just feel like you do believe because somebody taught you that? And now I want you to reframe how you see money and understand that money is a neutral source that can bring positive change to your life. List down all of the things that money has done for you and that will do for you when you have it. Because the fastest way to become the highest version of ourselves and the future version of ourselves, we talk about this a lot, is to start making the decisions that they would be making. So the version of you that already has your riches, that already has your wealth, how is she treating money? How are they treating money? Are they treating it the way that you are right now? Always being mad at it for not being there for you, even though your bills are paid? (laughs) Okay. And then last, I want to do, I want you to do what we did before, which was showing gratitude for money, taking it on a date, being like, thanks for being here for me, boo, while I got my nails done. Thanks for me for buying, like, thanks for buying me ice cream. I love you. Know where your money is going. Being like, okay, Netflix, I see you. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad I have money for this. Treat your money with respect, babe. Treat it like a person. And I promise you, you're going to start to see more come into you. But treating it like it's bad or like it's evil is the reason why you don't have any. Being rich is not a bad thing. And if you think, and if you still think after this episode it's a bad thing, just go ahead and unfollow. (laughs) Because I'm not the right person for you. I'm not the right person to teach you if you still think that. But I know that you're listening and you've gotten to this point because you know that you want to change your relationship with money. So let's do that. So again, I just want to reassure you that having money isn't a bad thing. It doesn't make you bad or evil. You're not going to turn into this blood-hungry wolf dictator that wants to kill everybody because of this, okay? So in lieu of the prompts that I normally give you at the end of each episode, I want you to just reflect on those beliefs that we challenged a little bit earlier. So recognizing how you feel about money and challenging those beliefs and where you picked them up from and how can you show gratitude for money. And if we're connected anywhere on social media, I want you to message me to talk to me about how you have shifted your relationship with money this week. What did you do to wine and dine your money? What did you do to show gratitude for your money this week? And how did it show up for you in return? The four things that we talked about, recognizing how you feel about money, challenging the beliefs and reframing your thoughts and showing gratitude, those are going to be available for you in the show notes. And the show notes are going to be linked in the episode description for you to come back to later at a different time. This episode is all about how having a lot of money doesn't make you evil. Rich people aren't evil. Your broke mindset, though, is what's keeping you back and what's keeping you small. And if you're ready to get rid of that broke mindset, and you can go on to the fccoach.com and apply for my mastermind because healing your relationship with money is something that we work on intensively inside of the Ruthless Pursuit of Self Mastermind. Please treat your money well. Take yourself out on a money date. Treat yourself to something nice. 
and show gratitude for your money this week because I know that you want to be a rich bitch, but you've got to shift how you think about money in order to get there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. The next episode, we're actually going to take a little bit of a shift and we're going to be talking about narcissistic parenting and how to spot it. A lot of narcissistic parents are also like my mom, make you feel bad for wanting certain things. And if you have a narcissistic parent, you probably also have a shitty relationship with money. So the two go hand in hand. So you definitely going to want to tune in to that. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. And remember that your journey to reclaiming your power starts now. Make sure you're following me on social media, on Instagram at a Frank Life Coach, or on LinkedIn at the FC Coach so that we can stay connected. And visit the show notes to get all the juicy details from this episode that you can find in the show description. And if you're looking for help with your money mindset, make sure you go to the fccoach.com, fccoach.com. And remember that that link is also in the show description and click on work with me and we can start from there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Catch you next time.